Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Castle Keeper Bloodworth and uh, as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is going to be a recap. A recap of Session 35, but, uh, but also it will be a uh, kind of a bringing together, finally, of the, the concept of this campaign. So, uh, you know, for, the, for quite a while, the campaign was just something that was evolving and, and going in some different directions and such. And um, it's finally come together to become the nine tomes of the Circle of Eight. Now, what brought us here is that um, along the way, as I was running, uh, you know, various adventures, um, mostly adventures that I've created myself, but I've been borrowing from other sources and I've been bringing in as many of the old school adventure writers into this campaign as I possibly can, you know, not excluding Gary Gygax, of course, because the Castles and Crusades um, Igsburg setting is Gary Gygax's work. So it's, it's, there's a lot of mini uh, adventures that were in there that were written by Gary Gygax. So that is also included in, in our, you know, long run so far of, uh, of adventures, but I've also taken uh, adventures from, uh, uh, from uh, Joseph Block, and, um, you know, that was a, a kind of like a crazy circus kind of adventure that was built into, uh, you know, built into this campaign, and then uh, there's also Robert Koontz, which is the current adventure that the uh, player party is actually uh, in right now. So they are in the Dark Chateau and uh, they have been piecing together this uh, puzzle that, um, you know, that they, they finally started to get some, some uh, clarity on. The Castle Zajic that is here in Igsburg, they have learned through, um, you know, through research and conversations that they've had with some, you know, uh, very important NPCs uh, that they have come across, including the Ghost of Nestor. So they, they learned from the Ghost of Nestor that, um, that these eight tombs of the circle of eight. So these are eight artifact spell books uh, that were possessed by the archmages of the circle of eight. And, and they learned that these archmages of the circle of eight, Zajig was a member of it, uh, or even the head of the circle of eight. Um, and that by retrieving these uh, tomes that have been scattered throughout uh, the East Mark um, that they will gain access to the castle, uh, to Castle Zajic um, and that when eight of these books are brought together um, that they will um, act as a key to unlock the ability for the castle to uh, to travel between different prime material planes. Um, now, they are currently in the possession of just two books. And so they are working towards, obviously, you know, eventually finding the other six proper books. However, there are nine tomes. So one of them is uh, not one of the eight that function as a key. And so um, they will have to discover, uh, you know, which, which of those is not like the others, you know, basically, and, uh, and go forward with that. And, uh, and hopefully that will uh, bring, them to, um, bring them to unlocking that, uh, that astral projection or uh, gate gating of the entire castle um, to 
possibly bring them to a whole other prime material plane. Uh, but we'll we'll see how the uh, you know how the campaign continues going forward. So we are we are through 35 sessions so far, and we are introducing a new player uh, with a new character into the uh, into the session. So I'm going to switch views here and uh, talk a little bit about that. So I am going to come over to here. So. And this is our current launch page for the, um, you know, for the uh, campaign uh, for the, my game running here on Roll20. And, um, and we now have six players. Now, we're losing Kelly. Kelly um, Kelly's work schedule and everything just no longer able to, uh, to uh, participate in this campaign. Um, with the time zone difference, uh, it's just it's just way way too much. I mean, our game sessions were beginning uh, at around two o'clock in the morning for him, so that's just not a viable uh, setup. So it, it's sad to see him leaving this campaign, uh, but he is being replaced by uh, Q Cooper, which we're really excited about. Uh, you know, being able to pick up a a party member, um, you know, a new player that quickly. Um, it, it was literally an hour uh, or, or possibly even less uh, when I put out on my Discord that there is a spot open for anyone willing to play a magic user because the, you know, the uh, the party does need a magic user. And, um, and boom, there was somebody already in here. So, I've been saying this for a long, long time that uh, not only do I not have any issue with gathering players together, um, but these game systems, whether it be Castles and Crusades or AD&D First Edition or D&D Beck Me, um, any of the OSR systems, I've never had a problem getting players looking to play these uh, game systems. So. That being said, let me uh, jump to our, um, let's jump to our characters. So I'm going to go into our launch here and talk about the characters in a little bit more detail than that. So right now, um, yeah, I'm not looking to have that camera on. So we have Bill the fighter and Bill has been with us the entire time. Um, and uh, he is now a sixth level fighter. With 48 hit points and a AC of 20, so he is he is very very much a tank, um, very hard to hit him, and um, you know although his his hit points are kind of he 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 has had a few um, fairly low hit point uh, rolls. Let me double check that to make sure I don't have that wrong um, because sometimes they don't. Nope, he's still at 48. So. Um, so he has at 48 hit points. Cornelius, our druid, is a six-level druid with 65 hit points. Now Cornelius is is really benefiting from that Constitution bonus that he has because he is very very tough, and um, and he's almost as equally tanky as our frontline fighter. Um, so he's he's doing really really well, and he's one tough little gnome. Ornery Hamfist is our priest. He is a replacement for Cormac McMorn, who was killed in um, a previous session about two, two or three sessions uh, ago, and uh, and so Ornery came on, and uh, same player as uh, Cormac, but uh, he is uh, he is now the party's priest. And uh, doing quite well so far. Pounce the Ranger is uh, oh I gotta change this Ranger five. She's just a Ranger, um, so she is our Ranger, and I will change that. Um, so Pounce is our Ranger, uh, and she is of course sixth level as well. Everyone hits sixth level in the last session or two 
you know, so now the entire party is sixth level. Um, I brought on uh, Kane, which we'll get to. I brought on Kane uh, as a uh, as a sixth level uh, character as well. I don't believe in bringing characters in, like new players and characters, into an ongoing campaign at um, you know at a lesser level. Um, you know, I, I prefer to bring them in at the, you know, at the same level band that the rest of the player party is. And then at the, you know, the one experience point that would put them over that top. So he has the minimum experience points to be sixth level. And, and we'll go forward with that. Um, seven is our monk. Uh, he has the most hit points in the entire party. And um, although not the greatest of uh of acs with an ac of four he is a sixth level monk i have done some home brewing with the player to um to diversify the attack modes of a uh, of a monk so we, we sat down and um i i think we came up with a uh a more viable character class as a monk uh, than was originally in Castles and Crusades. And it is certainly something that I would like to see um, Troll Lord Games, you know, address because, uh, you know, I could definitely see my player's uh, viewpoint that the monk is a, you know, was quite underpowered and just kind of bland in comparison to what the other classes can actually do. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see that we are, um, you know, that we're able to sit down, you know, as a player and a game master and hash out something that I think will work better, uh, both for him and for, um, uh, you know, for me as well. So, and now we have Kane Firebane, our wizard, um, so... Uh, he joined us, like I said, with like an hour of my posting. Um, need a player. Boom. Right in there. So uh, he is a sixth level magic user. And he's, he, I, I started noticing like the, the uh, spells that he got when we were, you know, when we were randomly generating the spells that he was picking up. Uh, he actually ended up with quite a few um, fire-based spells, you know, like Burning Hands, and he already took Fireball, that was one of his choices and everything, and I, I had just mentioned to him, I was like, you know, it seems like your character is going to have a, um, you know, a theme, you know, to him as being like a, you know, a fire or a pyro uh, technic uh, theme to him, and so uh, he ran with that, and I uh, came up with his uh, character concept and really, really excited to, uh, to see how he, you know, integrates in with the group. So I am going to say this, and this is particularly out to uh, Kane's uh, character too, um, oh, or player, um, is that, you know, I, I really do want him to feel comfortable coming into an established party. And I know I'm going to switch views, uh, go back to here. Um, as a player, I really respect a player who is willing to come into an established campaign uh, with a new character and to try to um, to try to fit in. And um, I have really great players who will um, who are welcoming of new players coming into the party. Um, Shadow and Son. Who plays Bill the fighter in this? Uh, he was a the new guy into our um, into our one year long plus campaign when I was running uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons First Edition, and um, so now he's been with us for over a year, probably closer to a year and a half uh, with the same group of players. And integrated really well. So, um, you know, so to, uh, to Q Cooper, you know, coming into this, uh, this group, you know, I want you to feel as welcome as possible. Um, it's a great group of players. 
you will, um, you know, you'll have a great time. I'm hoping that you have a great time and, um, you know, and, and just feel free to, to fit into the dynamic of the party, uh, in, as, as soon as you're comfortable with doing so. And, um, you know, and in the way that you want to, you know, because it, it really is, uh, important that everyone feels that they can um, that they can contribute uh, and not just contribute as a you know a, a functioning character in the group dynamic but contribute as a person and as a you know player in the uh, dynamic of the gaming group as well so um, so I welcome you um, we're gonna have a great session tonight. You know, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I've been dabbling with different ways to introduce um, Kane into the party, um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I'm locked into the one that I am going to go with. And um, and now I just have some work. Uh, you know, I have some you know secret messages to send to uh, to send to Kane so that uh, he has some background of how um, how he's going to fit in uh, to this story and um, you know and then just jump right into um, his character being the driving um, the driving force for the next step in this planned on very long campaign because like I said, their sixth level already. It took them 35 sessions to get to sixth level. They only have two of the uh, eight or nine tomes that they're um, that they're seeking. So I can foresee this campaign going for quite some time. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to um, you know let everyone know, and, and including my players as well, um, is that. Um, I'm currently waiting for a lot of the uh, Troll Lord games uh, materials to start, you know, coming out from previous Kickstarters and everything. Everything seems to be just on the verge of coming out, whether it just be in PDF or um, or physical copies very, very soon. Um, much of it is uh, Gary Gygax's world building, which I'm looking to in in incorporate as much of that as possible. There's Gary Gygax's The Hermit Adventure that is uh, is coming as well and, and how I might integrate that into the overall nine tomes of the Circle of Eight will certainly be something that I'll be looking at. And, um, and, and then the other things from Troll Lord Games that I think would be really, really cool stuff to, you know, mix into this campaign um, you know, as time goes on and everything. So, um, I was planning on having a hiatus for a little bit, but now with a new player in place and a new idea of where we can go next with this, uh, that is going to, you know, the hiatus will be put on hiatus. All right. And we are going to continue going forward, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and, and knocking out some, uh, some side quests before we get on to uh, the main uh, the main thrust of what their campaign is has developed naturally organically into so far. So uh, really excited about it. I hope you're enjoying these uh, recaps. Um, if you're running a Castles and Crusades campaign, uh, as I know Dakato is as well. Um, you know, feel free to jump in there and, and tell me about, you know, your Castles and Crusades campaign uh, in the comments section. And as always, if you haven't uh, subscribed, please consider subscribing. Uh, you know, like and share the videos and do all of that stuff. It's great for the algorithm and, uh, but more, more importantly, get in those comments and, and let me know about your campaigns and, and you know, things that, um, you know, I might consider putting into mind that you really enjoy from Castles and Crusades um, or, or from any of its uh, supplemental books as well. So you'll have a great one. I uh, look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or 
at a convention sometime soon. My next convention is the Philadelphia Area Game Expo in January. Uh, really looking forward to that. And, um, and then we'll see if there's anything that falls in between then and now. You all have a great day. Take care.